Good morning, this is Distracted Beam, and today I'm going to be talking about the GoPro Hero 4 Silver versus the GoPro Hero 4 Black. The Too Long Didn't Read version is get the GoPro Hero 4 Silver on account of it has a longer battery life and has a screen on the back. The touch screen on the back. That built-in touch LCD screen. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. Now, I personally have no intention of ever shooting in 4K. I only wanted to shoot in 1080p. So all I really wanted to know when I was buying this camera was, is the 1080p on a GoPro Hero 4 Silver the same as a GoPro Hero 4 Black? I came across this video and I found that it's pretty much exactly the same. Plus or minus a few pixels. I did a lot of research before I bought this camera. I watched a lot of YouTube videos to see what they said and they all said the same thing, which was you only need to buy the GoPro Hero 4 Black if you intend to shoot in 4K. But you don't need to, only professionals need that. But that really bothered me on account of what are professionals doing that gives them use of 4K. Why am I not good enough for that? Okay, so let's start out with the number of people that actually have a 4K monitor. Not very much. You don't need it. The chances are even you don't even have a 4K monitor. You're probably still running 1080p. LG. After all, it's good enough for your, your living room TV. But 4K monitors are coming out. As a matter of fact, Tech Syndicate pushes a Korean model, which is a 40 inch for $400. And a lot of people are starting to get that. There's There are 4K monitors out there, but it's something that definitely has not impacted the lifestyle of most users yet. After all, even the Blu-rays only play at 1080p, so in order for you to get a 4K source, you would have to go on the internet and find something to stream, or render it yourself. However, watching the 4K video that you recorded is not the be-all, end-all of 4K recording. You have a lot more options later on if you choose to edit your video if you started with 4K. As an example, this is a video that I recorded while I was walking around outside, and as you can see, it's jumping around a bit. And that is just on account of my not having a very steady hand while I'm walking. Almost every editing program has the capacity to stabilize a video. I was using Sony Vegas, and you can see a few options here that was in it that I had for stabilization. And you can also even upload your video to YouTube, and YouTube has a stabilization feature in it where it will stabilize your video for you. If you look at the YouTube video, you can see that it does a little bit of cropping but it also does a lot of warping it makes the video look a little bit bizarre it does do a good job in stabilizing the video which is what you were looking for but it's not something that I would use to give you an example of what stabilization does I took five minutes and I hand stabilized a short portion of this video just to show you and as you can see these little black bars kind of appear on the side and what that is is the camera recorded only a, a portion of what's actually going on it didn't record what was going on off the screen so you have to pan back and forth in order to make it stable. And what all the stabilization programs do is that they crop off that area that has the black bars and then zoom in on it. And that works. It does a great job. Where 4K comes in is when you zoom in on your picture, uh, if you already started out with a source that's larger than 1080p, so the 4K, and then you go down to 1080p as your final resolution, you will not lose any, if at all, of the data. Now, I personally am biased against cropping off parts of your video just on account of you might lose information that was really important to the final video. So instead of spending the extra money on getting a GoPro Hero 4 Black so that you can shoot in 4K and then stabilize it later, I would recommend going out and getting something more along the lines of a gimbal. There's a lot of videos out there about people using gimbals that have extremely smooth video and they didn't lose any framing whatsoever. So what you start with is what you end with. It might not be perfect at the end because there could be still some little jitters and jumps that you might need to use stabilization for, but you won't have to crop off nearly as much information. The second thing that 4K really comes in handy for is cropping. Even the best cameraman in the world is going to lose tracking sometimes. An option there is is you can take a few extra steps back, put on a wide angle lens and get the entire scene and then instead of having to track it manually by following your subject, you can just record everything and then when your subject moves you can crop it out later. So here for an example we knew that a bird was going to fly by so we just took a few steps back, I just recorded the entire scene and then you can crop off just the bird later on and everything seems nice and smooth. You can just zoom in on the subject and as it flies by in the editing program later you can make sure that you have perfect smooth tracking of the subject. You may have noticed that this cropping takes up about a quarter of what the original screen was, and that's exactly correct, and that's why I used it. The reason 4K ends up being so handy is because if you start out with a 3840 by 2160 and you crop off a quarter of it, that resulting image is 1920 by 1080 which is 1080p, which is perfect for watching on your TV or monitor, whatever you might need. And when you finally zoom in on it, you have not lost any data. That's all I have to say that's good about editing in 4K. The final thing where 4K comes in where it's actually better is if you take it and you upload it to a client like YouTube, in 4K it's going to give you a much better looking picture than if you were to upload it in 1080p. The reason for this is not because the resolution is better, it's because the bitrate is better. 
bitrate is everything when it comes to videos. And to prove that, I've got a few sources here. This is a time lapse that I shot in the GoPro Hero 4 Silver. And this is a full 4K video because it shot a picture every 5 seconds at 4K and then compiled it into a video at the end. That means that this is a perfect 30 frames per second 4K video just like you would get on a GoPro Hero 4 Black if you were rendering in real time. So I took this video and I re-rendered it using different resolutions and then again at different bit rates. As you can see the bit rate makes a much higher impact on the final video. The next thing I did was I took a 4K video uploaded to YouTube and then downloaded all the different resolutions from YouTube. And then I started playing around with the bit rates and resolutions of the videos, uploading those to YouTube, downloading them back to see if it made any difference whatsoever, and it did not. Any 4K video played off of YouTube plays at approximately 22 megabits, and any 1080p video plays at approximately 4 megabits, regardless of the starting source. What that means is you can take any video up, convert it to 4K, and it will play at 22 megabit. So I don't even need a 4K camera to play at the highest bit rate on YouTube. It seemed a bit strange to me considering that some of the professional videos I've seen from GoPro look so much better than the videos that I was getting, so I actually downloaded that video as well and found that the bit rate was also still the same. So it actually had nothing to do with YouTube, it had everything to do with the way that they were filming it. If you take a video and everything is nice and slow, but there's one subject that's moving fast, then it can allow for a much slower bit rate. But if there's a lot going on in the video and everything's moving very fast, then YouTube is going to have to compress the video to adjust to a slower bit rate. So we know how 4K can really help you out, but let's talk about how 4K is really a problem. The sizes of 4K files as recorded from the camera are much larger. Now the resolution itself doesn't really make a big impact, but the GoPros give a higher bit rate allowance to larger resolution videos, just like YouTube. The second thing that editing in 4K is a problem with is rendering time. Everything in editing is all about time. The longer it takes you to crop out or stabilize or render a video, the longer it takes you to get that video where you need it to be. I'm using an AMD Phenom 2X6 1100T Black Edition 6 core processor. I got this four and a half years ago. With those examples I was using before, they were both about 40 seconds. And if I was to render the 1080p video, it takes about six minutes. And if I was to render the 4K video, it takes about 12 minutes. That means that rendering in 4K takes twice as long as it does with this 1080p video. Now that's okay, it's something I'm willing to handle because I don't really do this thing professionally. I don't need to knock out videos quickly, I just do it in my own time. If you're a professional, then you need to have a higher end processor. Dual 18 core Xeons. You need to have something that can render videos very quickly so that you can pump them out and so that you can get that money. If I was to render a 25 minute video, it takes about four hours. And that's four hours where I don't have access to the computer. And that's kind of a bummer. So if you want to look at rendering 4K videos on a professional level, you definitely have to have a much faster processor. But by the time you end up getting to that point, you're going to be looking at something like this. This image is from my Canon 5D Mark III with an L-series lens on there. But if you already have a camera like that and a processor like this, and you're editing things on a professional level in 4K, then chances are you're going to have a GoPro Hero 4 Black anyway. Now I don't need 4K, I don't shoot in 4K, so I don't need it. The first time we're having a GoPro Hero 4 Silver bit me in the butt as opposed to the black was shooting in slow-mo. I like slow-mo because I work with a lot of machinery that moves at a somewhat high speed, faster than I can see what's going on. So I can use this camera to diagnose problems that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to see. If you're on a professional level, you might be using a Phantom V2511 to record objects moving at a very high rate of speed. Now this camera can record 96 gigabytes in a matter of 4 seconds, and if you divide the 96 by 4, then you end up with 24 gigabytes per second. That is a lot of data, like a ridiculous amount of data. Even in a video where a guy took 24 SSDs, put them in RAID to see what the speed was that he could get out of it, it ended up being 2 gigabytes per second. So that means that this camera is 12 times faster than this hard drive setup. And that is friggin' ridiculous. Neither GoPro is capable of doing that. The GoPro Hero 4 Silver is capable of 45 megabits per second, and the Black is capable of 60 megabits per second. Alright, much, much less. I'm going to give you kind of an inaccurate example of how a camera makes a video. What it's doing is it's taking one picture, and then another picture, and then another picture, and then putting them in line and making the video. It does this 30 times per second. So let's say that each picture is 1,000 kilobits. That means that when you take all 30 of them and you put them together over a period of a second, that video is going to be 30 megabit per second. So in dealing with slow motion, it's going to take 240 pictures per second. If you were to keep that original 1,000 kilobit picture and try to take that 240 times per second, then the final bit rate would be 240 megabit per second. And neither camera is capable of that. 
The only way that the camera can handle that many pictures per second is if it decreases the bit rate so that it can handle it. And to do that, it decreases the resolution and increase the compression. So here's an example of video that I took with WVGA resolution at 240 frames per second. And here's a video that I found on YouTube that somebody used a GoPro Hero 4 Black at 720p. Both were at 240 frames per second, but as you can see, their video was much better. Something I learned while I was taking this video was that when it's shooting at 240 frames per second, the camera is taking pictures so fast that the CCD cannot pick up enough light in order for the camera to give you a good picture. One thing I didn't notice was when I hit the button to start recording this video, the screen darkened up. What that should have told me is that the final video was going to be too dark to use. So I re-recorded this video, but I used a fluorescent light to give me a lot more light on the source, and the quality did improve. What that can tell you is that the screen on the back of the camera can actually help you if you're recording in slow motion video. And I can't help but feel that this video would have been a little bit better if I'd been using a GoPro Hero 4 Black. What it boils down to is if you're willing to put in the time, if you're willing to put in 60 hours worth of editing time to make a 5 minute video, if you want to make the absolute best quality videos that you can, then the GoPro Hero 4 Black is the only option. Before I finish, there's one other thing I want to talk about. One thing that bothers me about the, all the videos that I found on YouTube was that they all say the same thing, which is that the sound quality is okay, but if you put it inside the waterproof housing, the sound becomes poor. What bothered me is that nobody actually gave any examples of that, so I'm going to show you how easy it is to make that video. And here it is. Testing sound quality. Testing sound quality. Testing sound quality. Testing sound quality. And if you weren't here at the very beginning, then you probably didn't see the Too Long Didn't Read, which is still, I believe, the GoPro Hero 4 Silver is better on account of the longer battery life and the screen on the back. But that's for you to decide, and hopefully you have enough information now to make that decision.